Hello my friends, it's Becky. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. On my channel, I am going through my good midlife crisis where I am journeying through my 40s working oh so hard to get my poop in the group. In order to do this, I have been working on my physical, my financial, and my mental health. And today is Sunday, October the 20th, I believe. Let's check. Yes, October the 20th, and I am going to be taking a look at the Budget Moms Budget by Paycheck book for 2025. She just came out with this. Mine just came in the mail tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, yesterday. So I'm going to open it, and we're going to flip through it and see how it compares to past months, uh, past years. I do not have this last year's book because I ended up giving that away, but I do think I'm actually going to keep this one and use this one instead of printing the digital one. So let's uh let's open this box and take a look so i ordered the small size and it came with a sticker which i will add to my sticker collection if you watch my videos you'll know i have a whole bunch of stickers behind me in my videos so i will keep that and then because i pre-ordered it came with a bunch of um cash envelopes uh cash quantities so this i do not need because i do not use cash for my budget, but I will probably give this away in my next giveaway, whatever that is, whenever that is. So um, just watch out for that one because I don't need this, but it came free with my pre-order. And then here we go, the main event. I'm going to open this, it comes wrapped up. Give me one sec, pretty tissue paper. It's loud, sorry. And here we go, here is the the new budget by paycheck book in the small size. And I am going to open this, we'll flip through it page by page and I will give you my opinion. These covers are interchangeable. I did not order a different cover. Um, I like this one better than the other two, but if you don't like this one, it comes with this one and then you, there are other options that you can choose on her website. This again is the Budget by Paycheck book by The Budget Mom, and I will link this below in case you are interested in checking it out. Give me one second, I'm going to organize myself here and we will go flip through it. Okay, for reference, here is the Budget by Paycheck book that I bought in 2022, I believe it was. Um, and I believe it was 2022, I don't have dates. But I used this book, I filled this book out, and I loved it. Um, and then a friend of mine, Kay, gave me the digital copy of her Budget by Paycheck book for my birthday, and, or Christmas, I can't remember which, that year. And so for 2023 and 2024, I have been printing my books. I haven't been using the, um, the hardbound one. So I bought one last year, I did a flip through of it, and I will link that below if you're interested in seeing my comparison from last year to this year. I will link that video below. But this, this year, I ordered the smaller size, which for comparison, here is the difference in sizes. So if you are familiar with her products, this is the same size as the Live Rich Planner um, that she offers, and it's a smaller size. So we're gonna flip through the new one and then we'll compare some to the old one because a lot of the things are exactly the same in her, I'm gonna move this over, sorry, my, my mat's not where I want it. A lot of the things are the same in her um, book that, that I have and the one from last year, she didn't change a lot. She had a whole lot going on. She got married, she had a baby, she lost her mom. So it she did put out a book, but she didn't put out um, she didn't make all of the changes. This year there are a lot of changes that I am very happy about and very excited about, so we will compare them. So, you, when you open it, you get your intro page. Like always, she introduces herself. This is uh, Kiko, she is the budget mom. She gives you a little welcome and then your workbook belongs to page. Ah, uh, it's stuck, okay. Then, so I think what's different, she gives you this QR code so you can learn, watch her videos, or read the instructions if you want to, but she didn't put all of the instructions in the book this year like she has in the past. So there's a lot less at the beginning of how to use every page, how to fill it out, what to do, um, which I actually like because I watch her video so I already knew how to use it. And you can just scan the QR code if you have any questions on it. Then she adds this, finding your why. Um, I like this because 
I think that's an important thing to keep in mind as to why am I doing this? Why am I budgeting? Is it because I want to save for retirement? Is it because I want to take my family on a vacation? Is it because I want to pay off debt? What is it? It can be whatever because everybody's different. Everybody's going to have a different why. But whatever that is, she helps you find out why. And then that's what the sticker says. Remember your why. Um, I read her book. I do have her book. And um, when I sat down to figure out my why, my why is, um, is for peace. I want peace of mind. I want peace in my life. I don't want the stress of having to deal with um, un unpredictable finances or not having enough money for retirement or not being able to go see family if I need to, not being able to take a vacation if I need one, if I need a mental break. Um, just peace, peace of mind, peace of life is my why, but everybody's going to have a different why. I don't have kids. If I had kids, I'm sure it would be very different. Um, so this is to find your why. And then she gives you a goal worksheet, your short-term goals, your medium-term goals, which is for within five years, and then your long-term goals for 10 to 15 years. This is not new. This has been in all of them, um, but I do like that worksheet. I'm going to try to turn this so that the, the bump isn't right at the top. Ugh, there we go. Okay. And then membership and subscriptions. This is where you can keep track of all of your memberships that come out every month so you can make sure that you are budgeting for them on a regular basis. And um, the annual cost or the monthly cost uh, it depends on how you budget. Sometimes people pay for things annually and save up a monthly amount for them, or sometimes people just pay every month for some, some subscriptions. So it just depends on how your subscription is set up. I have some that come out monthly and some that come out annually, so I will use both of those. This is different and I like it. It's the same setup, but I like this one better. Maybe just because I'm so used to the other one. But these are to track your savings goals. So you can color in each leaf as you meet, a, as you fill it up each month. And um, I am so not centered. I'm sorry. So you write down what your goal is in the amount. And there are 12 leaves, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep, 12 leaves. So you get one leaf a month to fill up as you fill this up. And, and then you can track where you are visually for your goals. So she did have this in her other workbooks as well. I'm gonna flip to that. She had boxes. So I liked these boxes. They were nice, they were fun. But um, I, I like the new ones too because I've done this for like three years now so I'm ready for something different. Um, you write, I, this is how I do it. I wrote what it was for at the bottom. This is my registration. And I needed a hundred dollars. I'm set up for the small one so you can't see the whole thing. A hundred dollars total. So that was eight dollars and sixty-six cents every month. And then I filled in the boxes as I filled them up for um, every month. So that is that. And I will do that for this savings tracker as well. Okay, so there's two pages, so you can have what is it, eight savings goals that you can track visually on here. Then your yearly spending. So this is a little different. I think this is the same, but she left something out. I can't remember what she left out. Let me see what's different. Uh, yearly spending is the same. I think my text, my total monthly inflow. Is that here? Yeah. She didn't write total monthly inflow here, but this is the exact same worksheet as the previous year. So I'm assuming that's what this is. And then the expense category, this is where you can track what you spent each month in each of your categories that you come up with. You come up with the categories. And then your yearly balance, you can watch your savings grow, hopefully, or your debt shrink, hopefully. Um, over the course of the year, you can track it and look at those numbers visually. This is not on the other one, so that must be an update. So previously, she had a yearly budget. I mean, ugh, a yearly balance was here. It was its own page and then she gave you some graphs. So I tracked my emergency fund on one and my debt on another. Keep in mind this is 2022 so my debt is not like this anymore. Thankfully. Look at those numbers y'all. Look at those numbers. Yay! I'm so glad I don't have that anymore. Um, but anyway, that was previous but now it's um, just this one balance. There's no graph to track it in which is fine. So then she has these budget category organizers, and I believe this was in last year's. I do not have last year's, like I said, but I do print mine, 
and she does have this as a free printable on her website. Again, I will link her website below. And I do have this in my current um, Budget Moms, a Budget by Paycheck book, which I will get my current one. It's over there. It's like out of the way. So I'll go grab my current one here in a little bit and I'll show you my categories. But you would fill this out with your, actually, let me go grab that. I'll be right back. Okay, so here is my current year's um, budget. And like I said, I print this, so these are my, my disc binders. And y'all, if you were here for last year's setup, like at the beginning of January when I set up my budget book and I was saying how big these were and that I might should have gotten smaller ones, I'm so, so glad that I started with big ones because it's October and this is almost full. So just a word to the wise, if you are setting up uh, your own budget paycheck book, um, get big disc binders, <laughs> disc rings, because they, it gets full. It gets full. Sorry, I'm sitting back down. Okay, so here are my categories. I have a home category, a giving category, a fun category, subscriptions, medical, debt, previously budgeted, meaning this is like for my sinking funds. I pay some bills for my mom, and then anything that gets towards savings or if I roll it into the next month, that's its own category. And this is how I categorize my spending. So home is groceries, gas, pet expenses, household, my car insurance, my internet, my rent, my OneDrive, which is my um, like 360 and extra savings, uh, extra storage, my water bill, any bills actually, and then stuff I forgot. So that's just a general idea of how you set these up. You pick a like a parent category and then each of your budget lines that are in that section that you will count toward. These are my home expenses. These are my giving expenses. Anything I budget toward gifts and givings or ecclesial giving or my niece. Um, fun would be dining out, coffee, my fun money. Um, if I go out for lunch after church, that extra $20, if you follow me in my, my YNAB journey, uh, you need a budget because I'm actually a digital cash stuffer. I use YNAB for that. Um, I use this book to plan it out and then I use YNAB to actually like track my budget and cash stuff cash stuff. Um, and so if I go out to lunch after church, that extra $20, that's fun money. That's not giving. I didn't donate that. I use that for food. So I can't count that toward giving. So anyway, that's just a general idea of how you set this page up. Um, and it wasn't in the older book, but it is in the new book. Okay. And then she just gives you some note pages to write down your thoughts and your notes. You get two of those. And then here we go into the first month. Now, what's different about this is, again, this is similar to the, um, I just forgot the name of it. I said it earlier. Her other planner, I'll think of it later, but it's undated. So you could start this right now if you wanted to. You don't have to wait till January. Previously, they all came with, a, with the month filled in, so this would say January. But if you want to start this in October, start this in October. You want to start it in November? You want to start it in June? Whenever you want to start this, you can start this. So you can buy it whenever. Um, and then she always gives you a little inspirational message. Never give up on who you want to be in life. So there's that. And then you get into the calendar. So here is the calendar. And it's undated, so you could put in whatever month it is, whatever date you want. Um, and you can use pretty stickers. Like I was previously buying all my stickers from the Life in Envelopes. So let me just show you, see how these are, these have the dates already on them, the months. So here is like my January, oh, this is my first one I ever did. I wasn't buying stickers yet, but here we go. Here's where I started buying stickers. Look at these pretty stickers from Life in Envelopes. I love her stickers. I stopped because I was going through some financial hardships, but now that I have my raise, I'm hoping to start buying some stickers from her again. Maybe not every month, but sometimes. But anyway, I use stickers. Um, oh, I didn't use all the stickers. I only bought the... Oh, those are pretty. Um, did I buy all of the months for this one? Yeah, so you get the... I didn't use all of these, so I didn't put stickers on them. But anyway, all of the different stickers, and they're very pretty. And then this is how you do your expenses. I'll, so I'll just save you having to watch me. So remember all those categories I said I had? These are how you track them and see what your spending is every month. Um, I highlight them into the category that they go into and um, keep total down here. So we're not there yet though. I got a little ahead of myself. So here is the calendar. You don't have to put stickers on this at all. You can just write whatever you want on here. 
Um, so you've got your calendar, important dates, notes, and then financial goals if you want to keep track of your financial goals here. So here is a little sidebar. And then you will get five of these. I believe it is five in each month. So I am super excited about the change she made to this one because look at how many savings goals there are. I think there are 17. I counted them. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. 17 savings goals as opposed to currently, these are where I keep track of my sinking funds. And I, if you watch me, you know I always have to split these up into two. Look at these stickers. These are also Life and Envelope stickers, y'all. I love her stickers. Um, Currently, I have to split them up because this is how small they were before. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You only got ten. So now you have seventeen. And she did get rid of this extra debt portion, which is fine because I never really understood how it was extra debt when you didn't track it in the first place. So I am totally fine just tracking everything here. So if I make a full payment, like a payment that's over my minimum payment, I'll just track it here. I'm fine with that. Um, but that's, I'm excited. So I would have to split my savings goals up into two weeks because they wouldn't fit on one page, but now they should all fit on one page. So I'm very excited about that update. And I'm sure other people had that same complaint because she changed it. So it's all savings goals and then debt. Oh, there's no savings. She didn't get rid of debt. She got rid of savings. Well, I guess that's all supposed to go in here. Okay, that makes sense. So you can put your sinking funds and your savings in here. I told you, this is a first look. We're looking at this together. So here, let's just start off in case you have never used one of these before. You track your inflow. So this is where you would put your paycheck, your rollover, any interest that you received, maybe a second paycheck if you have a partner and you're both budgeting in the same budget, um, and you would put that all here. You would put what you anticipate receiving in this column, and then after you received the payment, you would put what you actually received. So, for example, my paychecks often fluctuate from one, one cent in either direction. Um, I'm salaried, so they should be the same, but for some reason, sometimes it's one cent more, sometimes it's one cent less than it was the previous week, So or the previous paycheck. I don't know why my, my payroll system does that, but it does. Um, so I would budget something, and sometimes it would be a little off. Um, I would anticipate, um, if you're not new, if you follow me, y'all, Seth's car is paid off. It's paid off. But Seth would be paying me for his car every month, and so I would anticipate him paying me. And some weeks I would put it here as anticipated, but then he wouldn't pay me that week. He'd pay me the week before, or he'd pay me the week after. He always paid me in time for his car payment, but I knew when he normally paid me, so I would put it on that week. And sometimes he paid me the week after or the week before, depending on his pay schedule. Um, anyway, your fixed expenses, this would be your bills. Your bills that are due for the week or however, if you are budget bi-weekly, weekly, monthly, however you're paid, however you're doing your budget, you would put those bills that you have to pay on this budget right here. Um, the date that they are due, which you can get off of your tracking sheet at the beginning in case you uh, forget and then how much you're expecting that bill to be. Sometimes they fluctuate and they will be less or more than you anticipate, so then you're gonna have your actual here. Variable expenses, if you are familiar with like the cash stuffing way of doing things, these would be your envelopes. Um, your weekly envelopes, your groceries, your hair, your pet, whatever it is that you're, you're spending consistently from what you would carry around in your wallet if you're doing cash stuffing. That's what I put down here in the variable expenses. Then your savings goals, um, you'd put your sinking funds in here, what you're saving up toward, or I'm guessing now that this is just all one section, also your long-term, short-term, and mid-term goals that you have for like um, a vacation or your emergency fund, or like I save for my great nephews, I save their ages, so I would put that in this section as well. And then your extra debt, she just calls it debt, not extra debt, so that makes more sense to my brain. So if I were to put anything toward, like currently I have a balance on my American Express card that I am not 100% sure I'm gonna be able to pay off before interest accrues, but I am going to work very, very hard at doing that. Um, it's a, it's in a, an interest-free period right now. So 
I would put any extra payments that I'm making toward American Express. I'm going to pay my minimum payment. That's a bill, the minimum payment. And then anything extra will be a debt payment toward it. And you would do that if you're making extra payments toward any of your other debts. This page here I don't use because, again, I am not a cash budgeter, which is why I've been printing mine for the last couple of years because I feel like this is just a waste of paper. I don't use it. Um, but I do really like this size book and I, I want to try this book out. So um, I am going to use this book. But this is where you would write down the category that you need. So say you are you have to get cash out for your groceries. So you say groceries and I need, for say this is just for a week, I personally budget $125 for groceries every single week. And then you would write out your donations, donations, de denominations, 100 or, or 1, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, or backwards if you want, and then how many of each that you need, um, how many ones, how many fives, how many tens, how many twenties, how many fifties, how many hundreds do you need to draw out of the bank? And you would write all of that down, then you would total up here and make sure the total value reaches, is matches what your actual total is, and then that would um, be what you needed to go to the bank. That's where these come in. You would take this to the bank, and hand this to the teller, these are sticky notes. You take this to the bank, write this number down here, and hand this to the teller so that they will know how much money you need, and it's supposed to make it easier for the teller. I have heard that it does. Again, I am not a cash budgeter, so I have never used this, but every once in a while, like when I went on my cruise, um, I needed to get a bunch of cash out, and I wanted a bunch of different denominations because some of it was for tipping, and some of it was for, um, like Ubers and some of it was for buying souvenirs and things. So I wanted to get a bunch of cash. And so I didn't use this because I didn't have it, but this would have been nice for that situation. I cannot imagine a world in which I need this many. I would love to go on this many cruises. Who wants to go on cruises with me? Um, anyway, that's what this is for. So you take this information, you put it on here, you take this to the bank, just the sticky, and you give it to your teller and then they can give you the exact denominations that you want. She also gives you a little spot to write down your thoughts and your priority goal. And then you get, like I said, five of those every month. So this is pretty much the same other than the savings goals, which I am very excited about. I'm just gonna flip to the end. And then she did make some changes. Oh, the expense tracker. So when I print my own, I print this page right next to this page. So it'd be like, if this was gone, it would go from this page to this page every single week and I do based on the month a four or five week budget I am paid bi-weekly but I budget weekly um, just because of the envelopes it works better for my brain I way I don't have too much money looking at me because I will spend it um, so but this is where you would write down all of your transactions so on the first I went to HEB which is I live in Texas so it's my local grocery store that came out of groceries I spent $75 and so if you're tracking an ending balance, which I'm not because I'm not using cash, but if you are, then you would write down, so now I have $75 left, or actually it'd be, what, $50 left in my groceries for the week because I already spent 75 of my 125 And then I would highlight that in the color that coordinates with my groceries, my home, which again, we looked at in the at the beginning with this page. Oh my goodness, I keep opening right to the pages I'm looking for. I don't know how I'm doing that. But you would have that set up. So you, if you couldn't remember where you wanted to categorize it, that's where you would flip back and be like, groceries is under home. I'm going to categorize that in blue or whatever you have home for. And so you get a bunch of expense trackers. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get six expense trackers. And then you have a debt payment plan. The debt payment plan is for if you, obviously if you have debt. So like for me, as I mentioned, I have an American Express card that I'm trying to pay off before the interest accrues. So I am going to write American Express, what my beginning balance is, my interest rate is currently zero. My minimum payment I think is $80. And then my order that I wanna pay this off in is B number one, like this is my one thing I wanna pay off. I also just recently purchased a new car against my will, but it really, I had no option. So I would also put my car on here because that is a debt. Um, back to Life in Envelopes, if you are familiar with her, she has a channel, her name is Jennifer Bleacher, and I watch her YouTube as well as I love her stickers. Um, she does debt like I do, like I like, um, and she says she categorizes everything as a debt, 
that is something that will eventually be paid off. And everything is a bill that will never be paid off. So my water bill is a bill. It doesn't matter if I live here for two years or 50 years, I'm always going to have a water bill where my car will eventually be paid off. I will pay it off at the end of the loan and then I won't have to pay any more on it. So that is a debt. Um, but the insurance on the car, that is a bill because even after my car is paid off, I will have to continue to pay that. So this is where you would track your debt. And then if you make any additional debt payments, like I said, I'm trying to focus on paying off my American Express, um, I would put that here. So say I have an extra $400 that I paid toward my American Express this month. I haven't yet, but hopefully I will be able to put something toward it. I would put that here, the date I, make, I made it. And then total debt payments this month would be all of your minimum payments plus all of your extra payments, and that's how much money you paid toward debt this month. You can then track how you're doing on your debt. So this is the information that will go to, I'm never going to be able to open right to it this time. Go on this page here where you're keeping track of everything, your overview, your debt balance here, your debt balance here. So you would write down what your debt was at either the close of December, if you were using this previously, or just now, just starting, would be this month's debt total balance. So this will be the beginning of the month, this will be the end of the month, and then this would be how much progress you've actually made, and then the percentage of that if you want to keep percentages. And then, so in the first month you're doing this, these would be the same, but once you get into it, you're gonna, total debt you started with will be the amount of debt that you started with. So if this is the first time you're filling this out, I'm gonna say I have, I don't know what I have, but let's just say I have $5,000 worth of debt. I'm gonna write down $5,000 here, and it'll be the same here, but by the time I get to June, this will be 5,000, this will be significantly less, hopefully. So, and then this month's balance and then your overall debt tracking, how you did overall, um, the progress that you've made so far this year, which is super, super um, motivating, I think, to see this tracked down if, when you're trying to pay off debt. And then the same thing over here, your monthly net worth, these are be your assets and then your liabilities. So you can add up everything you own that has a positive value and everything you owe that has a negative value and figure out what your um, net worth is, which would be this minus this. For most of us, it's going to be negative, but for some people it's positive. And so that's awesome. And then you will um, track how you're doing this month compared to last month. Sometimes it's gonna go up, especially if you have money in the stock market, it goes up, it goes down, depending on how the market is doing. And then your monthly budget category breakdown. So this is where you would total up everything on your expenses that you highlighted in those different colors that go in the groups. And you'll say, I spent, I budgeted, what's 125 times four, what's that, $500 for groceries. So this would be my grocery, I budgeted $500. I spent $498, so that was a difference of negative $2. And then your percent of monthly inflow, your inflow is going to be your starting balance plus your earned income, that's whatever money you earned, plus other income. For me, that would be like Seth paying me for his car payment. I didn't earn that, um, but it is money that came into my account. It's cash back on credit cards if you get rewards and things like that. If you used any savings that were previously saved that did not come in this month, you add that here. And then that is your total monthly inflow. It's different from your income because you're including your savings used um, and your starting balance. So it's probably going to be more than your actual income. And then this right here, you do your percentage of how much of my total monthly inflow I spent on groceries, how much of my total monthly inflow I spent on debt, how much I spent on my fun money and my giving and things like that, you can keep track of that. All of these are optional. You don't have to use these. As I said, I don't really, I haven't been closing out my budgets like I want to be, but maybe I will next year. That was my goal this year too. Um, because I do most of my budgeting in YNAB, which is why I've stopped printing these pages <laughs> because I don't use them but I really like this book and I want to keep it. And then she also gives you a meal plan page um, to do some meal planning. You can write down what your, your monthly food budget and then what you're gonna make for dinner or lunch or breakfast or whatever here in this month. And then one more page for thoughts and notes. And then how can I improve my finances next month? She gives you a little section here for you to think and if there's anything you can do differently Maybe there's nothing. Maybe you're just 
doing what you need to be doing. But that's there if you want to. And then there are 12 of those. So again, another little inspirational stop leaving the big dreams to the millionaires and little inspirational thing. And you get 12 of those. They're all exactly the same. We're almost done, y'all. Almost done. Then at the back of the book, after the 12th month, there are stickers. So she gives you stickers here for your months. Um, there are all 12 of them. So you have 12 months worth of stickers. You can use them for your main one or you can use them for your meal prep if you want to. Um, and you're buying stickers from somewhere else. So at least you have your stickers. You get some payday stickers, some little dollar signs, some hearts, check boxes, a moon, a rainbow, some little appointment reminders, um, some just fun stickers here for you to use. Uh, and there's some more little payday stickers here, credit cards. Anyway, and that's it. And then your pocket pages at the back if you want to keep anything like receipts or anything in there. And that is it. That is the new Budget by Paycheck book by The Budget Mom. Again, I got this, I got this, and I got this for free. I think you had to have pre-ordered it to get these for free um, because she's not, these used to be included in the book, um, like where you could cut them out, but they're not. So she was giving them for free with pre-orders. And that is it. My thoughts. I really like this one and I am planning to keep this one and try it out this year. Um, Maybe next year I will buy the digital version and print it out, but I really like this size. I think this is a really great compact size. I don't carry my book out with me. I don't like take it to the library and budget. I just do it in my living room, but I like the size. I like how small it is. Um, so Live Rich Planner, that's the other, that's what she has. I knew I'd remember it eventually. It's the same size as the Live Rich Planner that I have that I am using um, for my hour by hour uh, planning now that I have such so much to keep track of at work um, but yeah my thoughts are I really like the changes that she made this year I think she took people's suggestions into uh, consideration and it seems like most of the people have the same suggestions as I did so I'm very happy with it um, I like the fact that the cover is interchangeable I love the way this cover feels I like the way it feels and I like the way this one looks so I'm not planning to change it out but she does have two other cover designs one is like a smiley face and the other one I can't remember what the other one was um, but this is the one I would have picked anyway so I like it I'm happy with it what are your thoughts are you using the budget mom's budget by paycheck this year or are you uh, going with another route what one do you use for your budgeting let me know in the comment section Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out if you enjoyed it, if this was informative, and if you like this kind of stuff, maybe check out a couple other videos and uh, come along and subscribe. That would be fantastic as well. All right, y'all. I love you, and I hope you are having a fantastic day. I will talk to you later. Bye.